I've mentioned the air sup system that I have on my bus on a couple of my videos and I've had some questions about that so I thought I would do a video just about the air sup system. So the air sup system is comprised of two basic um, elements. The first one is this element which is a um, gas recirculating uh, crank, crankcase gas recirculating system that takes the gases out of the crankcase that would normally come out of this breather here and the other breather on the front side of the motor which is toward, toward the front of the bus and this hose that goes through here and down to that breather and it sucks the gases out through those uh, two places and puts them into the intake and it comes down and goes through the motor and gets burned off. This one has been closed off since I purchased the engine you know, 20 some years ago and would have gone over to the other fitting which is right here on the back side of this canister and then the other hose from the front side of the motor comes over to the canister on a couple of inches away. So basically this is just an empty can and because the gases have particles of oil in them that condense when they travel through the system, the can allows them to condense in here and drop down through this tube that goes back down to the oil pan and goes back into uh, circulation through that, that tube. So the first part of this takes the gases from the crankcase and runs them back through like any uh, gas recirculating system would and um, burns them off. It keeps the oil off the back of the bus, keeps the oil from dripping out of the, the vent tubes on the ground and makes things neater. It has this um, valve here so that if there's too much suction uh, from the intake that it doesn't suck the oil out of a crankcase and it allows the air to travel through the filter here. There's a ball here that unseats and, and um, allows the air to go that way. Otherwise it just pulls the gases up through the tubes. Walker makes this air sep system and they offer a new version of this that doesn't have this great big three inch um, hose that goes into a specially made fitting in the intake for the engine. And so this is a welded fitting on here with a three inch tube on it and it's a lot to do. The new systems now have inch and a quarter uh, lines and the inch and a quarter line just you know you could drill a hole there or tap into your your uh, compressor intake here and have the gas return that way. So the new one's easier to install and um, a little bit smaller than this one but should work just as well. Alright now we're in one of my favorite spots where this is the bulkhead right here between the engine and the, well, there's two of them between the engine and the rear axle, and we're between the two. And this is the starter on the back side or the front side of the motor. If you're standing uh, looking at the back of the bus, it's on the front side toward the front of the bus. And this is that breather, and this is the plate that starts right here and goes down to the oil pan down there. It's really wide because the engine's laid over on its side. And um, this is a little fuzzy right now, but I haven't cleaned this thing for probably over 100,000 miles. And there's a steel wool kind of thing inside here. And you take the little thumb screw off here and take the top off and then pull that out and clean it up and solve it and then put it back in there, which I'm gonna, gonna do here soon. I'll clean all this stuff up. But this is what it looks like normally, which isn't terrible for 100,000 miles considering that you know, it's sucking up all the oil and the fumes and stuff and it's, it weeps out. But you can see that I keep after, like that little rag right there, a little piece of paper towel right there. I had a leak earlier around the starter and I tightened that up and made the leak go away. And um, so that was just there to see if it was leaking. If it was, it would be filled up, but that's been there for, I don't know, a year probably. No, no not a couple years. Um, and you know, that stuff stays on here for an amazingly long period of time. Uh, and you can see the bolts, I've snugged those up and it's dry around that pan. Um, back of the transmission here. But anyway, that's what that looks like from here.
And oh, the, the tube, that's what I wanted to show you. This tube is the tube that goes over to the air sept system that um, we were talking about. And instead of having a vent tube that just goes down to the ground and causes all the oil to go on the ground. So that's the tube right there. Now we're underneath the back bumper and that is looking toward the front of the bus. You see the rear wheels here, the oil pan. And attached to the oil pan is this canister. And it just hooks into it with a bracket to two of the bolts that are along the back side of the oil pan. And uh, it drains the oil from the tubes that vent the air box. And the air box tubes, one here and then one over here on the other side, just drips oil into this can. With every oil change, you take the plug off and it unscrews. There's a tube that goes up in there to allow the, the gas to vent out but uh, and not create any kind of vacuum or suction on the thing. And um, it collects the oil. So when you empty your oil pan, you just take this off and dump it out with the oil that you're taking to the dump anyway and clean it off and then put it back on there and it lasts It'll probably last two oil changes. Usually about a pint, maybe two pints come out on a 10,000 mile oil change. And so it's not, not too bad. But this is the second part of the system. You buy them separately. And I'll provide information at the end of the video about where to get them. And the other thing I do is that I'm constantly going around tightening bolts on the, on the fittings on the bus. So like these bolts around the housing for the gear drive and, and um, flywheel, you know, every once in a while I snug those up. I snug up the bolts around the oil pan and the oil pan adapter plate. Uh, you know, I was, I was recently just fixed the oil leak on this power steering pump. I had an oil leak on the bottom of the compressor, so I took, took that off and put a new gasket on. Here's what the gasket looks like. Um, that's pretty simple. You know, just six bolts and put it on there. Um, there's also a gasket on some of the compressors that goes around this end plate. This one doesn't have the gasket. This one has a, an O-ring on it. That was leaking, so I have the O-ring ordered out. These bolts are loose right now, but I'm replacing the, that O-ring. Uh, you can still see the remnants of the oil in here. I haven't cleaned it off yet from the power steering leak. And, you know, I go around and, and just tighten things up because they get loose. And if you don't stay after them, you have a terrible mess on your hands. Um, this harmonic pulley has a seal there that occasionally leaks. I've taken that out and replaced it. You take the muffler off and, and uh, put uh, uh, a puller on the harmonic pulley, pull it off, and then just snap out the, the uh, seal on that. One thing that always leaks is this fan drive, and the fan drive is two halves of oil-driven drive, and it um, leaks no matter what you do, no matter how tight you make those bolts, there's a oil passages between the two halves and you can never get it tight enough to keep the oil from pushing out there. So they're constantly wet. But as bad as that looks, it's only um, maybe once every 10 times I park, I'll leave a drop on the ground. So it's not, not too bad. So you do have to stay after it to keep you know, everything tight and keep everything from leaking. And it'll hopefully keep oil off the back of your bus. And you can see I have oil spots on the bumper here, and that's from uh, my power steering leak, and I haven't cleaned it off yet, but uh, I don't like that. I like the back of the bus to be clean, and I like to be clean under the ground. So here's the V730 transmission, and this is the dipstick tube that goes into the pan, and I had a leak here at one point, and that was probably a couple years ago, too, and I put this piece of paper towel on here, and I wrapped it up. I wanted to see if it was going to get red with transmission fluid, and uh, I've, never, I've never bothered to take it off. But that darn thing stays on there. You would think we drive in all kinds of weather. You know, eventually it would just fall off of there or something. But, you know, I stick these things in here to collect oil that's dripping for, you know, just to see what leaks and what doesn't leak, and it stays on there for miles and miles and miles.